What's going on guys, Jeff here for Mad Hatter's Reef and today we're going to be adding corals to the Pico Reef Tank. Welcome back to Mad Hatter's Reef. My name is Jeff and this is where I talk about everything reef tank related. So if you love reef things like I do, make sure you smash that subscribe button and the bell so you can be notified every time that I upload a new video. So we've been working on this Pico Reef Tank build for a while and if you are new to this and just watching this video for the first time, there's a playlist in the description below where you can catch up on this build and get up to speed really quick. For everybody else that's been along with us on this build, today is the day that we're going to be adding corals to the Pico Reef Tank, so let's jump into it. Alright folks, so we got a brand new giveaway that we are going to announce today and this this is for a lifeguard turbo reactor and all you need to do to enter to win is comment on this video hit the like button and be a subscriber of mad hatters reef doesn't hurt to hit the bell so you can be notified every time that i upload a new video because every video that i'm uploading for this month will be included in the giveaway and i will work my way to one lucky winner of this turbo reactor so hit the like button leave a comment down below subscribe, hit the bell, let's get it. So in last week's video, we actually bought fish from Live Aquara. We had inverts, we had fish, and we added them to the tank. And if you guys want to catch up on that video, it's part of the playlist, or you can just jump in the description below to check that one out. And as far as for today's video, where we're adding corals to the Pico Reef Tank, I didn't go through a typical online vendor. I actually went through my wholesaler, which I've used in the past for Mystery Reef Box. The downside of going through the wholesaler is, one, these aren't my corals. I'm going to be selling them eventually. I'm going to be growing them out a little bit and then hopefully getting a little bit of a return on them. So this isn't necessarily a reflection of ordering corals online as probably more realistically going to your local fish store and picking up corals through them. But in the grand scheme of things, the way in which that you would be taking care of the corals and adding them to your tank is going to be pretty similar whether it's online or going to your local fish store. The biggest thing with ordering online is there's a lot more travel involved and a lot more risk involved with the corals. The other downside of ordering from the wholesaler is they have a price point that you have to meet to get to with your order. And with the Pico Reef Tank, I couldn't just buy three corals and then have them ship them to me. I had to hit that price point and that forced me to order a lot more corals than I needed. But shortly, those corals will be listed on mrbshop.com for sale. And right now they're in the water box and just doing a little bit of health inspection on them before I actually list them, which is something I always like to do prior to actually just selling corals. I keep them for a little bit, make sure they're healthy, and then I list them on my website for sale. Now, if you want to check out this order in its entirety, I'm going to be posting a video for the Reef Club members tomorrow night. And all you need to do to become a Reef Club member is click the join button down below, check out the details, sign up, and that video is going to be available tomorrow night for all Reef Club members. So without further ado, let's jump into the corals that we are going to be adding to the Pico Reef Tank. Some of these frags. So right there, we got our zoanthids for the Pico Reef Tank. And we got our Duncan Coral Frag. That one's got three heads, so that's pretty cool. And we got a hammer coral which isn't on the plug or anything I believe that's a branching type hammer all right guys so I got my shipment all figured out I've been floating the corals for a little bit now and what I have here is basically a very simple dipping station for corals um, this two gallon bucket you can get that at Lowe's I also have this bin here which is in the concrete mixing section. Um, I use this when I am dipping large quantity of corals uh, but when I'm doing smaller batches I tend to use this two gallon bucket and then use this as kind of like a spill guard to keep the water from hitting the floor. Even though that the uh, room here has tile flooring I try to keep the salt water off it as much as I possibly can. Uh, I do use a number of different dips but today we're going to be using the Coral RX uh, this stuff's going to be expiring in a couple months and I want to use up as much of it as I possibly can. Uh, so I have this container right here. Uh, you guys have seen that in another video 
when I was talking about adding fish. This is my waste bucket and that's marked by uh, the X. What I use this for when I'm dipping corals is a rinse bucket. So what I'll do is I'll put um, some newly mixed fresh water in here and then I'll take some water from the containers that the corals were shipped in, put it in here as well. And whatever coral that I'm dipping, I try to add some water from that container and then I add uh, the recommended amount of Coral RX. I use this stir uh, that I got with a graduated cylinder kit that I picked up from Amazon to mix up the water pretty well. Um, I'll put links in the description for all this stuff if you guys want to check it out. Um, but this stirrer, I like it because it's glass and I can move the coals around if I need to. Uh, it's rigid enough to do that and then it does a pretty good job of mixing the water as well. So we're going to start taking some of these corals out of the tank and um, I'm going to use this tray again to kind of pour some of the water into this bucket and then set the coral off to the side then add the coral dip to it. Uh, so let's get started with that. Uh, this is one of our Duncans. One of them went into the water box. That was the three headed one. Uh, we're going to be putting the one headed Duncan into the Pico tank which we mentioned um, some of these corals uh, being ideal for a smaller aquarium and if you guys missed that video there'll be a link in the description for that as well. This is our zoanthids. I'm not exactly sure uh, which ones these are. I got two different types. I got the uh, whirlwind zoanthids and I also got some uh, golden nebula nebulas. I think these might be the nebulas but I'm not 100% certain. We'll have to see what we get when we put them under the light. This may, this is the other zoanthid. Um, this guy I'm probably going to put into the water boxes so I can properly identify. We'll put it in the frag rack for a little while. Let it color up and then add it to the Pico tank. And last but not least we have our branching hammer which I'm very interested in seeing how this does. I got two of these guys. Uh, one of them went into the water box. I kind of got started here with the dipping fur before we started filming. This is the bigger of the two. Um, so hopefully it does pretty good. Now with these smaller frags, it's not um, incredibly important to get a lot of water in this bucket because they, as long as they're underneath the surface of the water, we're going to do just fine. Uh, so this is a little under a quarter of a um, gallon that we have in here. This is a two gallon bucket. Uh, so I think it's like something like 30 drops. 30 drops per gallon, so we're going to go and give this uh, 6 to 7 drops of Coral RX. So you really want to make sure that you mix this to the best of your ability prior to adding the corals into it. Alright, so we got that all mixed up. Uh, what we're going to do now is add the corals into it, and I'm going to only use my left hand when I'm actually touching the dip water. And then anytime I'm adding corals to the tank, I use my right hand. And that's also our rinse bucket in between dipping. So we're going to add all these guys to the bucket. Then I'm going to start a timer for 10 minutes. After the 10 minutes is up, we're going to rinse them off and then place them into the Pico reef tank. And all these containers, if you didn't have a tray like this, uh, you could go ahead and place them into the styrofoam container uh, with the bag that came with the shipment just to kind of help clean things up and keep it a little bit more organized. Hey Siri, start a timer for 10 minutes. Okay, 10 minutes and counting. So we're going to let this sit up for about 10 minutes. We're going to swirl it probably every three or so minutes and then hopefully uh, the swirling will remove any pests that potentially could be on the corals, then we're going to throw them into the rinse 
switch them off to the right hand and place them into the pico. It's very important to make sure that the corals are not touching uh, while they're in the dip, even if they are the same coral. It's on a you know it's on a huge deal, but it's very important to make sure that you're not having the corals touch when they are in the dip, especially if you're dipping multiple corals at once. That could add to some pretty substantial problems. So it's very important to make sure uh, that you're keeping them separate. As you go around and you stir the outside edge of the bucket, you'll see things start to collect in the middle. Usually what I like to do when that's happening is I will move the corals to the outer edge. So that's usually where the most flow is. And that's going to have everything in, in that potentially could be a pest on them kind of gather in the middle. So right here kind of shows the importance of dipping. So as I go through and swirl the water, everything collects towards the middle. And there's a lot of debris right there, but as you can see, there's a really large black dot. Looks like there was some type of snail or slug on one of the plugs. It's kind of hard to pick up with uh, this camera, but obviously uh, some of those specks are copepods, which you're gonna lose some good stuff, uh, but it's also gonna help prevent some bad stuff. Uh, so I'm gonna leave this going a little bit longer and then we'll give it a rinse and add these guys to the tank. All right, so these guys have been sitting up for quite a while now, so what we're gonna do is I'm gonna grab with my left hand, rinse it off, and then add it to the Pico Reef Tank. Uh, with the exception of the Zoanthid that is on the plug with the stem, that one is gonna go into the water box. But we're gonna get three of the corals uh, that we talked about in last week's video into the Pico Reef Tank and it's gonna be the very first step into uh, creating a full-blown Pico reef tank. So uh, first things first, we're gonna grab the branching hammer. Give it a, one last good rinse. Give it a rinse. And then we're gonna swap over and place it into the tank. So something I'm pretty excited about is this uh, Flipper Pico glass cleaner and I'm going to be actually using this on the Pico reef tank. I took a look at this product for premium aquatics and liked it so much that I definitely wanted to add it to the Pico reef tank build. Um, I'll be sure to put a link to that video in the description below if you want to check it out. Uh, but man, let's see if I can get it out of this package. Alright, but not a whole lot to it. Uh, just a really strong magnet. You got this uh, Velcro on this side, which should do a really good job of ripping some of that algae that may build up on the system. Then you got this handle that is going to help keep the glass clean from the outside as well because it has that felt and a little bit of something to grab a hold of. So while we're at it, let's put that Yeah, it's going to work awesome. And I'll just keep it on the back when not in use. So, one of the last things I wanted to kind of touch on in this video with adding the corals to the tank. Um, this light I got when I was actually in the planning stages of this tank and really kind of uh, set the stage as far as what I was going to do for the build. Originally, when I first started kicking around the idea of this build, I was thinking about actually using this uh, for a Pico build, which this light was made for this jar, uh, which is a substantial upgrade from what originally I was planning on going with, uh, which that is incredibly small vessel there. Uh, but this light is pretty awesome for what it is. It has a diffuser that's built into it. It's designed to withstand the evaporation from the tank and be able to work seamlessly. Another thing that I like about this light, even though that it doesn't have a ton of uh, features built into it, 
you have the ability to kind of dial in your coloration of your tank which once you have it figured out the best thing that you're going to be able to do for your tank is to dial it in and leave it alone one piece of equipment that is going to be needed with this lid which let's see i want a little bit more blue than that that's good which it kind of works out today because i got my delivery of corals uh, but i also got something from amazon that's going to help me control the light a little bit better and that is a timer so that light doesn't have any timer built into it um, and you know we had a video a little while back where we talked about automation and this was actually one of the products that we talked about in that video and automation doesn't necessarily mean that you need to go out and buy a very expensive controller automation is something as simple as a light controller which with this light you don't really necessarily have the ability to uh, control when it turns on or turns off you have the ability to control the spectrum to an extent uh, but it's very important to especially when you have corals in a tank to control the photo period of the light and this little guy is going to help us do that so we are going to have a controller a light controller for the, the pico which at to this point i haven't had i haven't worried about it and i haven't actually haven't even had the light on because all that's been in there is hermit crabs and the fish that we put in last week so now uh, we're going to be able to have this guy I need to read the instructions on it looks like it has some type of battery built into it because it already has a light or it already has uh, power going to it that is going to be a very important piece of equipment when it comes to having corals in the pico reef tank is having that light timer uh, we talked about that in the automation video which we did a little while back if you guys want to check that out uh, there's going to be a link in the description for that uh, but as far as this guy we got control over the light coral is going to be a little bit more happy having a controlled lighting schedule on the tank all right folks that's going to do it for this one i want to thank you for joining me if you want to check out any of the products that we talked about in today's video there's links in the description below which will help you get to where you want to be with the reefs don't forget to hit the like button be a subscriber leave a comment down below and you will be in the running for this month's giveaway that's going to do it for this one i want to thank you guys for joining me and i'll see you next week right here with a brand new video